Next speaker is Rory McNeil from Research Space, and he's going to talk on our space plus IRIDES update plans and vision. Thanks, Corey. Hi, good morning, everyone. Uh, nice to be here. Uh, this is my second uh, UGM, and last year was the first. Uh, so this is going to be quite different in kind of perspective and tone from the other talks. First of all, I'm not primarily coming from an IRIDES perspective. Although, as you'll see, I write this of great interest. Uh, and secondly, it's not a technical talk. So um, I don't know if that's good or bad, but uh, that's what it is. So here we go. I'm going to talk first a little bit about our space. Then I'm going to talk about our space and IRODs. And then I'm going to talk about uh, some opportunities that Carol and I have been discussing for how we might work together more closely. So. The context that uh, we at Research Space think of, and I think it's a familiar one to everyone here, is the research data life cycle. So that just kind of sets the context. So what's the problem? I'm actually stealing here from Scott Yocko, who's the uh, uh, research computing officer at Harvard University. And he described this as a problem, which I think is a very familiar one to me and probably to all of us in the room. Uh, a lack of data centric tools uh, and a lack of interoperability between tools leads to siloed data, which impedes fear and also creates frictions for researchers. So, I think this is familiar to many of the things that we've been discussing. So, our space is really the tool, uh, it's the exception that grows the rule. It's been designed to be interoperable uh, as a fundamental operating procedure. So what is our space? Well, it's perhaps a bit of a strange piece. It consists of four components. The first component is what uh, is called, typically called an electronic lab notebook. So you see that as experimental data on the left. The second component is a fully fledged physical sample management system, which is integrated with the electronic lab notebook. Uh, so it's used in the active, uh, active research phase. Uh, third, it has a very good set of APIs for extensibility. And fourth, uh, it has an extensive connectivity with a complete ecosystem of both research tools and research data management tools. So if you just ignore the purple things at the top, and if you look at the things in the bottom left, uh, it's possible to integrate with, uh, with file stores so that you can link your big data to the experimental write-up in our space. Uh, we also integrate with lots of specialist tools like IRAT and Cluster Market and FAMES, which are tools used particularly in the life sciences for things, animal quality management, uh, equipment management, data relating to those specialist workflows. And then also things like Protocols IO, which are used uh, for protocol management across the wide of, uh, of domains. Uh, this year, I'm going to show you a video in a second. I uh, actually said we would do this at last year's UGM, and we did. Uh, we integrated with, uh, with IRODs as well. Uh, we also have integrations with research data management tools. So we integrate with data management planning tools and repositories uh, so that it's possible for, to have a workflow where you can upload your data management plan to our space associated with the data that's produced during the project and export the data to a repository, which then assigns a DOI back to the data management plan. So very nice automated workflow example. Uh, recently, we've also integrated with Omero, which is, I think, an important one. So that's kind of give you a sense of what our space is and what it does. And I'd like, I just highlighted the Dataverse Omero and I want integrations because I think there's great potential for, the, for these four communities to work together more closely. And coming back to our research data life cycle uh, concept, you can just see, I'm not going into the details, but uh, our space actually integrates with all sorts of things at University College London, where we have a major deployment, including data management plans, including storage, uh, and including other resources that they use to make the cycle flow more easily. 
And this is a, a graphic that UCL put together. So the vision of how this can work in kind of a pipeline like uh, flow where the data is actually aggregated, collected uh, in, in our space, uh, and then when data is added to it, it's passed on. And then the vision is that the data would become available for um, operations and things like AI. All right, so that was that was our space. So Taylor and I have been having some discussions over the past year about what happens if we actually make our space and our roads work together more closely. Uh, so this so this is the first bit of language here is, is Taylor's language. Going in an ecosystem best policy and auditing. Uh, it can provide an easy to use, highly connected, shared namespace with data discovery meeting all the components and the general principles. So, and what could this be useful? Well, this is my language. This can be useful and extensible. Uh, this can be a useful and extensible platform or glue in RDM ecosystems being deployed and developed by both institutions and national infrastructure providers. And now we're going to see a brief video of the first phase of the integration. Uh, this is a marketing video, I apologize. So, uh, you know, it's a bit, uh, uh, hopefully a bit slick. Not really intended for this audience, but. Hello and welcome to the iRods integration. Hello and welcome to the iRods integration showcase. iRods is an open source data management software which virtualizes data storage and has a wide range of capabilities and applications. Fastpace provides an institutional research notebook and sample management platform with a wide range of connectivity options, including links to data storage. However, when the pathways of files are disrupted, this can result in broken links. This initial integration with iRods is focused on solving the broken links problem, i.e. maintaining the integrity of links even when pathways are disrupted. This is achieved using unique identifiers provided by iRods. This initial integration allows you to easily set up access to a file system, view, download, access, and insert files directly into RSpace documents, and maintain links even if the files are moved. Setting up access to an iRods file system is easy. Under Systems and Configuration, all you have to do is select iRods, fill in the relevant details, and hit add. It's as simple as that. If you're a researcher, don't worry, this part will usually be handled by an admin. To access an iRods file system, go to the gallery and click the file store icon. From here, click add and you'll be able to input your login details for your iRods file store, which will bring up a list of files and folders in the file store, which you can choose to save and rename if you wish. This allows you to personalize the files and folders which you choose to access. Selecting a file store immediately gives you access to the files and folders contained within. From here, you can choose to download if you wish. Additionally, you can place these files and folders directly into documents within the RSpace ELN. Within a document, simply click Insert and File from RSpace Gallery. The bottom icon corresponds to file stores, where you'll be able to select the file stores that you've chosen to save. Here, you can check any files or folders that you wish to add 
into your document. Hit insert and it's done. It's as simple as that. If one of the files is moved, the link won't be broken. Selecting one of the files associated with the document will allow you to see additional details and the update path button allows you to retrieve new pathway information from iRODS. As we continue to build on this integration and improve it, we'll also introduce better tracking of metadata associated with data and digital objects, which will facilitate the flow of data and metadata into repositories. That's all for this video. Thank you for watching. Okay. Hello. Is it, is it on? Okay. Okay. Great. So there's uh, there's what we've done so far, and uh, what I'd like to do now is just float some ideas for next phases of the integration. This is really just to get feedback. Um, sorry, sorry. There's one other thing. So uh, later today, last night, I'm going to do a lightning talk, but uh, we do actually have a really have a use case, uh, which is at the Rhymes Institute for Aging. Uh, and uh, Fabian Monheim, unfortunately, was unable to um, be available today. Otherwise, he would have made a presentation about this. Uh, but as Fabian says, using the Yoda system from Utrecht for archiving, uh, Yoda is the front end and gives us a useful API and a system where we can freeze files. Uh, with IRODS commands, we can push large files into the archive. We'll talk a bit about more about that. Uh, and the FLI has been using our space for a number of years. Uh, so as Fabian says, our goal is to connect our systems more closely in the future, including to store big files in IROD's Yoda and link them in the ELN, just as you've seen uh, in the video. So yeah, moving on now to phase two. So what can we do for phase two? Here's some, here's some of the things we've been thinking about. Uh, one is exposing our space metadata to IROD's for, inclus for inclusion in a larger metadata lake, which IROD supports. Um, and some of the things we've thought of, we, we could use triggers to push metadata into IRODs on, for example, a series of things. For example, when our space data is exported to a repository, that could be a trigger. And you can also publish our space data publicly. That could be another trigger. Trigger, uh, Or when you apply a tag to a document in our space, that could also be a trigger for exporting uh, metadata into, uh, into IRODs. Um, another idea we had, that's that you could have a document title, an R-space document title, along with the user's ORCID and ROR, possibly combined with a contactable author name that identifies the user outside of our space. These again could be pushed to IRODs upon creation of a document. Um, and then a third idea is that a set of constrained values followed, uh, allowed by a form in our space could constitute relevant metadata to push to our space. So that's the first kind of general idea. Second general idea is really going the other direction. It's having metadata relating to files tracked by IRODs that are linked to in our space. If that metadata is then exposed in our space, um, and if we combine this with search in our space, it would make IRODs, uh, IRODs files or documents findable in our space uh, by their metadata. So this potentially could be useful, for example, um, if, I, if, if our space were included uh, in Mango. And obviously, the richer the metadata in IRODs, the more we get out of this, the more our space users get out of this. Um, so that's the second idea. Third idea is, is barely an idea, but we've done um, really exciting integration with Omiro, where you can now take down uh, images and related metadata from Omiro, and put them into our space and associate them with the experimental right up there. And given that Amir is very popular, that's actually um, proving to be very popular in our space as well. And I know that uh, there are discussions, or more than discussions, there are plans for integration between Amir and IROTS. So again, this, this is not very specific, but our space and Amir could have access to each other's metadata if they were stored, stored things in the IROTS catalog, and that could be interesting. So here's Terrell's comment uh, on phase two integration. There's still much to consider. Uh, we need use cases and community discussion. So hopefully this makes them write uh, some discussion. 
So we talked a bit about airspace, airspace and air rods from a kind of public point of view. But what are some opportunities for this possible closer uh, collaboration when we've been thinking about? Well, there clearly are opportunities at institutions which are already deploying in space and air rods like the Leibniz Institute for Aging, Leibniz Institute for National Public Research, and Leibniz University, which is uh, intending to uh, make uh, a more extensive use of IROD since it's already deploying our space and is interested in, in working on, um, uh, uh, on trying to do more things with IROD in our space. Uh, our space could potentially be, play a role in more coordinated institutional already and ecosystems, for example, Mango. And the third thing we've been thinking a lot is a potential role for our space in IROD and it's a very important emerging concept of research commons. So let me just conclude by talking a bit about research commons. So here's, I'm going back to, to Scott from Harvard. Uh, research commons, I like this definition, which should be very familiar to everyone here. Research commons bring together data with cloud computing infrastructure and commonly used software services and applications for managing, analyzing, and sharing data to create an interoperable resource for a research community. And this concept is being developed at universities like Harvard, but I think very commonly at national research organizations uh, like Canada's Digital Research Alliance uh, and super, super national research organizations like the EU Lab Collaborative Data Infrastructure. So we've been taking a look at, at the role that combination of our space and iron rods could play in these commons. So it's very interesting. If you look at the commons, here's the Canadian one. Uh, they are built around a series of, of core services, and they're not quite similar. As you'll see in a minute, the EDI one looks very similar. But they have storage. They're, obviously, they're based on storage. Uh, they have repositories, one of the repositories. They have a data management planning function. Uh, and there's a prevention of pins. There's a discovery mechanism. So the, I'm not saying these are the only core elements, but they're, they're quite, they seem to be quite common core elements. The problem is these research commons are being developed, and these elements are not interoperable. So right now, it's configured as a series of, of siloed services. Uh, and I think that actually that's some of the things that people in this room are working on with IROS is to try to overcome that siloing. Uh, so here's here's conceptually how we see uh, IROS and home space if they were to play in this universe uh, of the Canadian research commons because of the existing integrations and the additional benefit of having iPods be uh, kind of the crew at the center, it be possible to have much more streamlined flow of data and metadata throughout what effect, what in effect was the research life cycle. So I said they look quite similar. I think it, if you look at the EU that um, CDI, it look at it very similar elements to the one in Canada. You've got storage. You've got repositories, you've got a data management planning tool, you've got provision of kids, and you've got discovery. So actually, it's interesting. It's very similar. But again, not interoperable. Um, again, so we have a similar vision for, for the role that IRODs and our space can play um, in CDI. And here's an example, a little bit different. Let my time up here. I have two minutes on my next project. I'm just about to end up. So here's, this is a bit different, but this is an institution-specific one. So what we've been doing, uh, we have a, this promise project. I think it's actually quite quite similar to, to some of the things, for example, that uh, that, that Marvin is doing with Mango, coming from a slightly different perspective. And they're not using our rods. They are using they are using our space and Dataverse as 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 core elements in this. And then building connectivity around it. So here's the vision for uh, again how our space and IRONs could uh, 
and play a role uh, in, in the institutional commons. Um, so let me end up, or you'll be glad to know. So I made this announcement at, uh, in Bridger last week at the Bainhurst Community Meeting. I'll make it again here. So quite a for us, we're going open source, which is obviously a big, big challenge and a big change. Um, and it's uh, an invitation. Uh, we'd love to work with, with institutions, with NREDs, uh, and projects that are using IRODs. Also, these other kind of core tools, the Dataverse, Amira, and other RDM tools and also space integrates with to explore and develop the ideas presented above. Uh, I think, Carol, you're supposed to help me answer questions. That's your, yeah. So, uh, thank you. Are there any questions? Yeah. One in the computer. Yeah, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, from Mustafa, uh, does the IROTS integration feature require enterprise edition? Require what? Uh, does the IROTS integration feature require in enterprise edition? Uh, yes. And if it goes open source, when it goes open source, is that still the case? Will it still be an enterprise? Have, have we figured out your pricing model for being open source? Yeah, so our pricing model is, um, the answer is yes, it, yes, it, the answer is no, it, it, will not, it will not be, I don't think so. I don't think it'll be limited to the enterprise editions. No, we're going fully open source. So yes, yeah, so we've, uh, as you'd expect, uh, I've had a lot of discussions with the existing and prospective our customers are from our universities and research institutions. And I said, if we go open source, are you still going to pay for support and services? And the answer is yes. I know you're a bit skeptical about that. Uh, so it's, it's a risk. Um, but um, so the pricing model is it'll say the same when we charge for support and services. So my, my prediction is that most universities will still want the support and services, so they'll continue to be actually our our fees are about a third of what most of the competitors are. So I think they'll continue to pay. Uh, but there are a lot of project based uh, use need. There's, there's a, especially in Europe, there's a huge demand for an electric. Where electronics is born in an electronic lab notebook, there's a huge demand for an open source electronic notebook that can, can be deployed in, in projects. For example, that are being used by things like some of the NFDIs in Germany. So I, Anticipation is that those kind of project based usage um, will adopt the open source and they won't pay for it. And that's great. Uh, but that the institutions will continue, they'll, they'll want it. Uh, it's like insurance, they need it. So, yeah, you have to move up to the institution level rather than a project based level. I expect that's probably going to be true. Yeah. 